What's over? Crypto Muscle. Coming to you another YouTube video. Here we are internationally right now. We're wise. I think it's where Tech Crypto Muscle. And the Crypto Muscle Network coming to you another video. Alright, we're already uh, halfway through the year before the conclusion of this wrecked collaboration experience goes fully through. Because right, we all know Money Tree's been done. And the next step in the process is to close up shop with uh, Drip, with their animal farm. And um, other than that, uh, the last piece of that wrecked collaboration, wrecked wreckage puzzle is for uh, Pulse Chain to go down as well. But hey... <laughs> One one step at a time, one brick at a time, we knock it all down. Yeah, Money Tree, I love telling crypto stories, you know, because it's funny. There's only one other person in this space that can uh, tell the stories because he's the only one that's gone through this time and still here to this day, and that's the legendary Oracle, all right? That was the only other person in this space right now as I speak that we can go that far back in time. We could tell the stories of what it was, all right, to, to be amongst these losers that were in the space during that time. And all they, and man, one by one, they just died off. You know, like little roaches just died off. Bam, bam, bam. One at a time. Died off. I mean, there used to be a whole shitload of them. I mean, literally a shitload of these guys. Uh, and it was crazy, you know, with these token platform days and all that. And, uh, they, yeah, they just literally just slowly died off. I think the big turning point was, to me, it was, this was a, a, a new chapter in crypto at the time. All right, because Moonberg was kind of like the last of those token platforms, Right. And they try to play it with, um, oh, this is going to be a stable coin. Don't worry about it, guys. They're one for one stable coins, right? And sometimes they had some weird, odd pumps, right? To where they were, they were acting kind of similar to algorithmic stable coins where the value of them would just kind of go up. So sometimes there were times with Moonbird being like two bucks, which was odd for a stable coin. But it was happening. And I kept saying, wait, wait for it to be hit when it go free market. Because the thing about these so-called stable coins or tokens is that these stable tokens don't ever stay stable. <laughs> they, they actually uh, get released, a, you know, quote, unquote, free market and uh, let that determine the value of it, right? They get pumped. Dumped and die, right? And only thing, only way they can help maintain it would be a community of uh, believers. <laughs> and uh, if it could keep the facade going, it wants to go free market. But I don't know. They time it to go free market for a reason, right? When there's not enough interest anymore. So they let it go free market to uh, kind of just give it some action, right? Pump and all that stuff. And so that's what happened with Moonberg, right? Moonberg was like that last of that token platform era. Because next thing you know, you had Cash FX that came on the scene. We're talking about now 2019, all right? Before that, 2016, 2019, you had BitConnect. You had all these different token platforms, right? Then 2019 was kind of like a new era because people were just tired and fed up of these shit coins. Where you buy the shit coins and you know for your crypto, and then you're supposed to be able to either one play the market or two put into those platforms and you're supposed to earn more and then cash out. But the thing was, <laughs> they were cashed out, right? And so um, the best way to play it was the way that Oracle played it. Man, Oracle just bought into it, but he didn't play it into the platform plans. He actually just said, "I'm going to sell it." <laughs> at the peak, at the top. And he proven that with platforms like Devor, for example. And man, he pumped 
He waited for that pump and then sold the shit out of that man. Made a boatload of money. Now, had I did the same thing, I would have made some pretty good chunk of money on that one too because I was in divorce. But I was like everybody else. I kind of just said, oh, well, everybody's putting it into the token platform plan. You get more of these, then you can sell it and, uh, you know, get more crypto that way. But nope. They, they got pumped. They got dumped. We got stuck in these token platform plans. And the rest is history. We got stuck. Lost money. Whereas if you sold it at the top, man, you would made a boatload of money. And I was like, shit. <laughs> so Cash Effect started a new era because now um, it was crypto, crypto in, crypto out. All right, Bitcoin in, Bitcoin out, that type of stuff. It wasn't that bullshit. Oh, here you go. You give your crypto, we give you tokens, and then do whatever. So that started a new era, 2019 on. All right. So a lot of these dudes died off from arbitraging, Moonberg, all that stuff. They all kind of just slowly weaned off and died, right? They weaned off the teat. Then, yeah, the cash effects. So, you know, you still, you still have some people of those bloods that we refer to as. That were still around. These, uh, you know, these these people were still around, but there wasn't as many as back then, though, right? Um, they, I don't know, maybe they were burned out. <laughs> maybe they got they got tired of being burnt <laughs> at the same time, and they all died off, right? So you know, you still have some more left hanging around these token. You know, now no longer token platforms. Now they're crypto platforms, right? Big difference. And so. Um, you know, time went on. Yeah, smart contracts, such as money tree shit, and um, you know, and you, you, then they had things like uh, hex, right? You buy it into another shit coin, and that's that's a whole different area. It's not even like the ICO days. The hex, that's that became now Pulse Chain. That's a different sort of token. It is a token, a shit coin, but. It wasn't along the lines of that platform era of shitcoins where you put the shitcoin into a platform. It wasn't like that. It was This was purely off Hex becoming Pulse Chain. It was all purely off of hype and speculation and um, what it can possibly come to the table in terms of hype bringing on a whole new uh, crypto you know, chain, right? Network or chain. And so that's what that was. But it kind of played along that whole token shitcoin narrative, right? Because people experienced if you bought a shitload of hex. I almost pulled the trigger on that, I'll have to admit. Um, but then I couldn't bring myself to do that. But that's what started this whole new phase besides the crypto platforms. You started to see this new phase of, you know, these shit coins becoming something now. And it's all purely hype and speculation. Drip did the same thing too, right? Yeah, they had the little 1% deal with the faucet and all that bullshit. But it wasn't quite the same as it was with those ICO days, right? This, this was just a whole new era, a whole new time. So you had the drip with their shit coin drip. By the way, it is a shitcoin now. Uh, it did play the market, right? I got pumped to uh, like 160 something each. That's a lot. <laughs> and uh, you can stake it, all that stuff. Yeah, it still plays along that same line, but it was still different because it, it was now considered quote unquote DeFi, even though it's the same as ICOs. But ICO was taboo now, right? Uh, and drip came along a couple of years later, though. So there was space and time from that. Uh, Hex, uh, it was kind of a bridge to the from the old era to this new era, as well. And so uh, that's what all these things are these days. Is they're either considered as DeFi or IDOs. All right, so. Um, that's what they're referred to as these days. Uh, pretty much the same game, I guess, when you think about it. Now that I think about it even more, I guess it's pretty much the same game. But 
it, it's it's not so uh, man. I don't know. It's, it's to me, it feels different with these sort of things that's happening now versus back then. I don't know something about it. This is different. Uh, the cast of characters are gone, right? A lot of these characters are gone, right? And um, yeah, you you name them, they're gone. I mean, think about it. So anyhow, I just wanted to open up with that story of of this stuff. So Money Tree played along with the smart contract game, and in essence, it was just really what this Tiwi wanted to do was a year before he proposed before Money Tree about making a, a platform where you put in money, they use the money for trading, and then you get the results. Like any other platform that we're doing now, right? But logistically, he couldn't put it together. He couldn't get it together. And he had to go through a lot more hoops to get it going, right? Whereas if... When it, once he figured out in his little pea brain of his that it's a lot more easier to go the DeFi route and put it in a smart contract and deal with it on the back end of the smart contract with the same sort of way, trading and all that stuff, and then put the results back in into the smart contract and pay it out that way. All right. But his dumbass pea brain, all right, um, one, because he was arrogant and a piece of shit, all right, couldn't figure out how to get more money to come into this thing. And his pea brain got bored, all right, with just simple trading, right? He was doing uh, spot trading, which is, you know, minimal results, safe, minimal results. And he wasn't bringing in the people like he thought he was going to bring in because it's, not like the platforms that we mess around with. It's in a smart contract deal. So it kind of shrinks the audience just a little bit, right? Because you, now you got to use, you know, like a MetaMask or Tron Link or whatever. Uh, and in this sense, um, yeah, you can use MetaMask for BNB or, or uh, at the time, the BNB wallet, right? Binance wallet. Trust wallet, you could probably use this as well. But the point of it is that it wasn't generating enough interest. One, because his arrogance thinks he's like some big YouTuber, but he's not. <laughs> All right. Uh, wasn't bringing, bringing it in, but he needed that money. He was fiending for that money badly because he was bleeding so much. He kept on bleeding, bleeding, bleeding crypto. All right. And I've been telling in all these videos, he had explaining to his wife. All right. And, um, you know, when it, when it came to it, <laughs> he had to take some action because it's, he was running out of time. He had explained it to the wife. He was running out of time. He needed that money bad, so he stole, took it, blamed it on wreck trading, which is believable because he gets wrecked all the time anyways during that time. So it didn't matter. <laughs> it, it Either way, whether he wrecked or stole it, I think he stole it because he needed that money. But he wrecked at the same time all the time, so that's what made it very believable too. It's more believable uh, with this than that bullshit car wreck that Marco said about Echo One. You know, oh, you know, the admin, the admin got into a car wreck and broke his back. That's the dumbest excuse I've ever heard. All right, in my crypto life, that was that that, that goes. That, I, I'm at a loss for words. That is the stupid. Dumbest excuse ever. Uh, so it, it's more stupid than the, than the simple, I need the money now because my grandma needs surgery. And it's like, well, why the hell are you putting money to this thing if your grandma needed to have surgery down the road, you dumbass? So, you know, shit like that. But, um, yeah, the admin got into a car wreck and broke his back. And so that's why he hasn't been able to <laughs> put together anything for Echo. What the f Fudge is that, all right? What is that crap? Dumbest excuse ever, all right? Uh, but we'll talk about Marcos later in this video because that's another piece of shit of work that we're talking about here. So yeah, so he's he stole from Money Tree, and I touched on it, but this is real, all right? So Tiwi, and I wanted to, you know bridge the gap or the answer to Oracle because Oracle was like, wow, 
he uh, actually has a felony. Yes, Tiwi has a felony on his record, right? Because he spoke about it. I'm not making shit up. He spoke about it in one of his videos. How this is during the time of the pandemic. He talked about how lucky he was to actually have a job and a job that was essential because um, I don't know, they had to do with cardboard boxes or something. I don't know, whatever it was. And it was an essential job. So essential jobs were still allowed to work. Whereas if you were working like an office job, whatever, then you can't go to work, right? Uh, or any other sort of non-essential jobs that wasn't deemed as important. Like anything with stores, gas, essential, right? That you have to live, then, um, you know, you, you are still able to work, right? Everybody else stay home. So for example, my gym right? I used to go to that, my gym and they had, they were shut down during pandemic because it wasn't considered essential, right? So what happened to those employees, right? They had to stay home, you know, so things like that, right? So going back to Tiwi, he talked about how he was lucky that he was a, he had a job that was essential because the type of jobs that he can get are very limited because of his felony on his record. That's what he said. He said it himself when he was doing one of those stupid, uh, you know, things where he was driving to work and he would do like a live stream, uh, you know, just doing crypto talk, whatever. And he's driving to work on his phone and he would film the live stream while he's driving. And he spoke about that. All right. So he spoke about the felony. And so he's very limited. That's why he doesn't do much travel you know, outside of his, you know, where he lives now, New Zealand, whatever. And he can't do much traveling if any at all, because of the felony. That's why he hasn't gone back to his homeland like Thailand and things like that because of his felony, right? I don't. He didn't speak about what it was specifically or how he got it. All he said was he mentioned that he had it and it limits the jobs that he can have, which is true. If you have a felony on your record, it, it, it definitely limits the jobs that you can have if you're lucky at all uh, on able to get a job because man a, a felony is definitely steers a lot of job prospects away like 99 percent of job prospects away so if you're able to get in and get one then you're damn lucky to get a job all right but hey if you're in the u.s and california man that that, sh that should come easy because they, they don't give a shit about the people they they love criminals and stuff and so you would be, so, you know, Tiwi was ever to come to California and live and want a job and all that. Oh, they welcome him with open arms because California loves criminals. <laughs> and that's true. So, so he spoke about that. All right. I don't have to make shit up. I don't need to make shit up. Everything I speak about in all my videos, I don't make shit up. I just, I just tell it like it is. And the stories I hear and the experiences that I experience I mean, that's just the truth and, and of life, of what it is. So Money Tree died because of TV. And then, of course, what did he do? The stuff he said he would never do. Every time he said he would never do something, oh, I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do this, right? He, he talked about how he would not go through the route of, you know, being a trader that, would uh, you know go uh, what's the high risk because he didn't want to lose money well he did it he said he would never you know whatever steal or blah 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 you know whatever it is he claimed to do about money tree and what he do he stole from it <laughs> all right um, and his friends acted like they're surprised come on man you're his friends you you guys know all right you guys know and so, um, with all that, I would love to hear feedback from those quote unquote friends to actually see if they knew he was up to no good, right? Uh, let me see if I recall names. I remember there's a guy named Lay. There's Whale Miner. Those are like the two close friends. There's another friend he had in the same uh, country that he hung out with. I can't remember the guy's name. But um, if any of them guys want to share what happened after the fact, I'd be 
glad to listen to that and put it out there if they knew and all that stuff. And then there's that trash piece of shit uh, blood YouTuber as well, no longer in the space anyways, Money Mike, trash as well. All right, when he came out with divs.io, I said it's fucking trash. All right, trying to be like a crypto exchange, but on a smart contract, I call that shit out. And you know what happened? Tiwi and his little cronies try to to come come down on me because I call that shit out. And look what happens. All right, divs was trash anyways because no one gave a damn. And um, I was right about Money Mike. So yeah, fuck you, Money Mike too. All right. So, uh, it's funny how that is, right? It's funny how that is with these people. That when shit hits the fan, they can't speak about it. And, but I can. I'll speak about it all day long. And I'll crush them. And that's what I do all the time. So, um, yeah, money tree, gone, right? So, you know, and I always say that TV liked to bridge the story of Drip being involved into how he was going to use Drip and Animal Farm to help recover funds to bring it back. It's the typical, you know, the platforms that we are dealing with, right? You know, we deal with these high-yield platforms, mid-levels and all that. And what happens all the time in these platforms, right? Uh, when the platforms die, what do they sometimes do? They sometimes say, uh, oh, you know, if you want to help, if you need to recover your funds, go over to uh, this particular site. And then you sign up, you put in a $50 deposit, and then uh, we'll be able to access your account and recover your funds. They do that all the time in these projects. And then what did we do? He did the same exact thing as these fools do, right? And, and every time they say that bait and switch stuff, I always say stay away from that. Don't listen to those guys. Once is a done deal, it's a done deal. And then they'll say something like, oh, if you might, you know, we, we're in a process of migration. Uh, if you sign up for this site uh, and pay $50 or $75, $100, whatever it is, uh, we'll be able to access and recover your funds and you'll be able to withdraw and all that stuff like normal. And that's all just a bait and switch, right? And then we try to complain about it in the chats. They delete it so it doesn't look like there's any complaining going on. And Tiwi did the same exact shit. <laughs> same exact shit. Oh, I'm going to use Drip to help recover the funds. Just hang in there, guys. But he, at least he didn't ask for a, a deposit uh, from people. And instead, it was still a bait and switch because he was trying to switch it over to Drip and have it on Animal Farm to pay everybody back, which was very, very minute and minimal at best. And so that's what happened there. So, let's take a look at what Drip's going on these days, all right? So, Drip, uh, let me re refresh this baby here. <laughs> I mean, when you see flat lines like that, that means you know this this is dead. When it, There's really no activity. It's dead in the water. Last 24 hours, down 20% uh, in terms of 24-hour volume, all right? Only 151 bucks in the last 24 hours. That tells you something. All right, it, it really tells you something. 151. All right, in the last 24 hours. Come on, man. It, this shit is over. It's done. Let's see what transpires. So down another 2.6% uh, for the past week. As it starts to maybe fall under half a cent soon. Uh, in the past month, it's still down about 5.9%. All right, as it starts to fall below half a percent pretty soon. Uh, but yeah, drip is is long done. Let's see. My friend put 10,000 in the drip, and basically it's worth nothing. <laughs> oh yeah, I reread this before already last week. So. Um, yeah, this is this is not good. This is bad. Let's look at Animal Farm, right? Because you know your boy T would say, "Oh, Animal Farm." So down in the past day, six percent. That's big, just in the past day alone. All right, in the past week it jumped from six dollars to nine, but now I think it's starting to go down because in the past day down six percent already. 
So, whatever pump they try to inspire didn't happen. They did migrate to a new uh, site now with the pigs or not pigs, but the animal farms back up. I don't know if they updated the site here, but they did update the site. And the last I checked, they actually have $12 million into it still. And that's down from the last time. Before the site went down, the animal farm site went down. Before that went down, it was around $19 million, All right. And so now it's down to $12 million. If I could find that site, I'll pull it up. Um, I should have done that. But let's see here. Animal farm dogs is flat. Past day down uh, 1.8. So not too bad there. But still down 3 cents. Or four cents down four cents so um what do you get with animal farm right nothing i mean what's what's the use of animal farm so it's just going to keep going down yeah of course they'll have their momentary pumps but it, it will just go down anyways yeah so um <laughs> You could listen to those guys and say, oh, it's so cheap. It's so cheap right now. Go ahead. <laughs> buy it. It's so cheap. Be like what Jamie said. You could be a new whale. Then buy it. I dare you. Be that new whale. Be the new whale. All right. Man. It's so much. It's so cheap, guys. It's so cheap. But yeah, so um, yeah, the animal farm is uh, dead in the water, right? Wrecked players. Look at that. Hex holders are coping. Uh, let me see here if I can find the drip. Uh, at that point, they're trying to tell everybody go to, um, you know, go to, uh, let me see if they updated the animal farm in one of these links here. But they're saying, oh, go to SwapX. SwapX is going to be the new game changer, guys. Right? So that's what they're going to do. Uh, they haven't updated their links here. It's not Animal Farm dot app anymore. It's something else. I want to say it might be I.O., but, but, um, the SwapX, WDRIP partnership is so bullish, right? Of course, from Drip Millions, he would say that. And, uh, of course, Barter Clown here would say stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and the way they're playing their game right now, these chats used to be burning up thousand messages daily right I would have had to look through it these days I mean you'd be lucky if you had a few a day now with these chats because uh, they're just playing the long game of just trying to just uh, not really over talk drip right but still trying to keep it up that it's alive you know which is not it's pretty much dead but they have all these little side deals here that's going to, uh, there we go, animalfarm.world. Let's do that. Last I saw it was like 12 million. Or 13 million, my bad. 13.2 million. So, oops, let me bring it over here. But still, it's down from the 19 million before the site went down, right? When I thought the site was gone for good, right? Um, it was at 19 million, but guess what? Do you guys remember what the peak TVL was? Peak, right? It was over a hundred, it was I think 130 million. Peak TVL, 100, it was, it was either like 124 or 134, somewhere around there, but it was over a hundred plus, not 13 million like this. It's just slowly draining away. Then what happens, right? So, yeah, these guys are done. These guys are done. You better get your shit out before this is done, right? This is Before all this is gone. Because, like I said, it wasn't that long ago when I was talking about this at 19 million. Right? So, 13.2. That's a big chunk of it gone right there. Right? That's a third gone. Uh, so, just saying. Uh, who knows how much longer this thing's going to go. That's why I could just call for the end of the year. We'll, we'll just have a 
Christmas celebration of uh, New Year's Eve live of these dead deals. But yeah, so that's what's happening over here. Drip is dead. Swap X will not save it. All right, Drip X def certainly didn't, and Swap X won't. So good luck with all that bullshit. But it's it's not happening, buddy. And of course, we're gonna jump on over here. Let's see here. We'll check out our buddy here over at Hex. Still going down. Down 3.4 for the day. How about the week? Oh, shit. Damn. 16% for the week? That's a big one. Just wait and watch Hex going to the moon. Yeah. Yeah. So excited. Yeah. Hex is going underground so it can go to the moon. We are wrecked. <laughs> wow. See, they saw, they see the writing on the wall right there. Yeah, guys. Uh, very soon, it will cross all-time high. This is the time to fill your bags. All right, the same guy, this guy here, I said the same thing up here. Going to the moon, right? Let's see here. Hex will soon. Uh, triple zero one. Well, it's already there. It's getting there. But yeah, so pretty funny stuff, though. Yeah, guys. Yeah. How about for the month? Down 21% for the month. But when you look at the price, 0 0.0018 to 0 0.0015, and that's down 21%. You're talking, you know, this this is multi-trillion plus tokens circulating. So that's, that's even though the price is down slightly, that's, that's a lot. I mean, we're talking multi-trillion tokens right there, movement going down. So, yeah, that's the problem you have. That's the biggest problem I've had with Hex and Pulse Chain and all this whole time was that the supply was so damn big that, to me, it just, it's worthless to have such a big-ass supply of bullshit. So we're at day 387 of Pulse Chain. And um, still, I always like looking at PLS and PLSX, you know, from Sacrifice, right? You know, it's 0.196x Sacrifice, 0.47x Sacrifice. I mean, that's really nothing. <laughs> but overhyped talk right come on you guys remember you know during the time of the hex right and you could ladder stake it and all that stuff man you're gonna have generational wealth when you ladder stake it for your kids and they can pull it out and be able to do whatever because it's gonna be worth so much more and guess what <laughs> where's that at I'm just saying where's that at and so um you know that kind of parlayed it over into pulse chain and their sacrifice tokens here and man all the talk and talk and talk and to come out with this and it's like what really nothing i mean that tells you something right there so yeah funny shit though yeah just funny shit you know i just laugh at this all the time yeah, you know, and um, just when you really look at it, where is all the chatter about Pulse Chain and all that? There used to be so much dedicated content and speculation of when's it coming, when's it coming, and and uh, even no namers out there like that Rube. Uh, I already forgot his name. Pacey, yeah, that dude, that that loser. All right trying to hype and speculate about Pulse Chain, but it was trash anyways. All right, when you look at that, how trash he was that no one really watched his shit and cared about his speculation, and he tried to immerse himself in the Pulse Chain conversation, and guess what? Where's that loser at now, too? You know, and, and the list goes on and on and on. Man, the number one, I remember uh, Oracle brought this up recently, the number one anti 
hex and pull chain. We don't see any more in the meta. I'm going to look them up. Because meta was the one that was outright the number one hater. And I, I, I would have to say no, I'm the number two hater. <laughs> and look at that. A year ago. See all, all you know, losers like this guy? All right, a year ago. He said dedicated, you know, he has, he ran out of stuff to talk about, right? So he f focused on Hex at that time and all these other shit coins, but mainly Hex and Pulse Chain. And then he even dedicated himself to Pulse Chain content. It's like, well, how, how are you going to really, how are you going to really like keep the Pulse Chain conversation going? Right, so it, that's what happened there. Let's see here if the meta is still around. Let's see. I haven't seen anything in a long time. All right, cool. Damn. So it started coming out with new stuff here the last couple of times. Who taught you to hate yourself? I wonder what that's about. And Pulse Chain FUD podcast featuring Pulse Chain. Ah, welcome back. All right. I was going to say, I haven't seen anything from him in a long time. I missed, because I, look at that, five months. Uh, I'll go there. It was the last time. And uh, now we got two more new ones here. I'm going to have to check those out just to see. Yeah, he was the number one fudder is what he called himself. And so I would be the number two because I can't take the claim if he started it first. But I can proclaim to be the number two. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm going to definitely check that out. I just want to see what he has to say about Pulse Chain. But I'm just saying I'm not the only one because look at it. I've been saying all along it's such a disappointment at all this talk. But sound like the air just got all deflated out of that balloon, right? And so what happened? <laughs> where, where, where's all that pulse chain stuff, right? All these different shit coins and platforms say, oh, we're going to pulse chain, right? And so I'm still waiting, man. Uh, all these different shit coins I had dealt with before kept on saying the same shit, but yet nothing. All right? Literally, everybody and their mom was kept on saying, "Oh man, when Pulse Chain comes out, we're gonna go to Pulse Chain," and and everybody was just jumping on that bandwagon, but yet, where are they? And did it really move the needle once they did go to Pulse Chain for the ones that small minority that did go? To pulse chain did it actually move the needle no <laughs> all right no you can't speak for anybody and prove to me that it moved the needle just to migrate over to a new chain called pulse chain no it didn't and so all i gotta say is welcome to the end of 2024 all right when shit hits the fan and uh it shit's over just saying so with that, uh, I'm going to say, <laughs> you better be ready, you know, put that seatbelt on, make sure the, airbag, the airbags are working, because once the crash hits, it's going to hit you hard, all right, because when you crash into that wall, uh, I mean, the car is wrecked, will you be wrecked? <laughs> That's the question. Are you going to be wrecked, or are you going to get out, jump out the car before the car, you know, smashes you? So I'm just saying, you know, that all this stuff doesn't look very good. So other than that, oh yeah, comment down below. I'm telling you, I mean, I speak it, I speak about it, and you guys know it's true. I'll see you in the next one.